Glad you're back. The social media network Parler now fighting against criticism that it failed to flag threats about the deadly Capitol attack. Now, today Parler saying it alerted the FBI multiple times to violent content on its platform. They even said 50 times that before January 6th. Attorneys for Parler are making its case in a letter to Congress on the same day the CEOs of Facebook, Twitter, and Google were grilled on Capitol Hill for the first time since that riot. And the, it brings us to this question. Did Twitter, Facebook, and Amazon destroy Parler, the fastest-growing social media outlet in America because they couldn't control it? Joining us now to discuss this and more, Tim Pool, journalist, self-proclaimed disaffected liberal, and he's got a great podcast. Tim, what do you think? Why, why was Parler taken down the same day the president was? Parler was growing too fast. It was creating an alternate space for many conservative personalities, and the pressure was so great. Even I recognized I needed to have a profile there, so I started posting a little bit less on Twitter. I still use it. I still use other, these other platforms. But the big, the, the defining factor of whether or not one of these companies will succeed is critical mass. It was very clear that finally conservatives found a platform where they were gaining that critical mass. I think these companies panicked. You take a look at where all these companies are located. They're all in similar areas in Silicon Valley. And we've seen this pattern of abuse before from these companies. These guys know each other, these VCs. I would assume most of them, most of them are friends. It happened with Patreon, for instance. This is a, a subscriber platform where people who, who make podcasts or art can tell their fans to sign up and give a little bit to support their work. They banned a, a podcaster, a YouTuber named Carl Benjamin. When he moved over to another rival called Subscribestar, all of a sudden, they saw their financial services terminated at the exact same time different companies. It's no surprise to me. Parler actually challenged Twitter. And what you see from, from these tech companies, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they control the space. They control the speech. Think about what's going on with this pandemic. You can't go outside. You can't go to the bars. You can't hang out with your friends. All of these rules, you're forced to communicate online but they restrict certain opinions that normal people have. It's almost like they're engineering the conversation, whether it's intentional or not. Parler right. gave a space to those other opinions, and they, they nuked it, just what they did. Tim, it's almost like you have a choice. You could be Instagram and WhatsApp and get bought by the big guys or get destroyed by the big guys, right? Now, Donald Trump, within, uh, I think, a few weeks, is going to be launching on another platform. Are they going to try to take that platform, whatever it turns out to be, take that down? Now, this is interesting, right? I, I honestly think they did not want to remove Trump, but it got to the point where the political pressure was too great, and then they did. Before Donald Trump joined Twitter, Twitter was losing users. They were changing their metrics. This is my understanding of what was going on. And Donald, Donald Trump, you know, I, I should say before he ran for president, once he starts running for president, he dominates the news cycle. Then people saw the Trump bump. Media companies latched onto every single tweet he had. Since Donald Trump has been off social media and out of the news cycle, mm -hmm. they've still talked about the man, but there's not enough. We're seeing the ratings drop across the board for everybody, and remarkably, it seems Fox News, for the most part, has kind of just stayed where it was in terms of ratings. But CNN, MSNBC, ABC, everyone's going down. So I wonder, if Donald Trump does come back, will they feign a kind of, oh, no, oh, Donald Trump's back, but secretly want him to be back? Because his tweets, his posts means they can write all these same stories again, claim Trumpism is taking over the country and it's a big threat to everybody, try to get their ratings back up. He might be watching now. He might bring that up with Laura in a few hours tonight. Kind of interesting. He says that, you know what, the more I think of it, I like the idea of a press release. It's more elegant. Maybe I should have tweeted less. We'll never know. Tim, thanks so much. <laughs> Tim Pool.